This video is all about how to be better. So let's get started with the top tips that you need to be a better Marvel Snap player. Before we get started, I am a big fan of telling people to play however you want to play. If you want to have fun, do it. If you want to use a certain deck, do it. I have no problem. I'm not your mother. I'm not here to tell you how to play the game. But if you want to get better and improve, this is the video. Tip one, be patient. When I watch people play the game, both my opponent and when I'm watching streams, I see players who will play down cards seemingly without a plan. When you play cards in Marvel Snap, you want to know what you are doing in the vast majority of situations. If you are playing down a card for stats, you want to know, okay, I'm playing down this card for stats. Or if the card has a specific purpose, holding back and saving that for a later turn rather than just playing it down for stats is what you will want to do. I think I hold. I'm going to be patient because deep space is really a crappy location. This is why I say patience as well. If I had waited till turn two, I could have got a sentinel. What will happen over time is that you will notice that your patient play just helps your total play level rise. It feels uncomfortable at first, but I speak from personal experience. I went through this transition. I was kind of impatient. I would end my turns early. Sometimes I still suffer from that. As you play more patiently, you see, oh, it was actually good I played patiently here because now I can set up what my deck is actually trying to do rather than ruin that by playing down cards just to play them on earlier turns. This leads into our second tip, which is just knowing what you're doing on each turn. How does your current turns play help you win? And what are you doing next turn? And what are you doing the next two to three turns? The more that you are able to plan out in advance and think ahead, the better positioned you will be to win. This not only applies to your own play, this also applies to the opponent's play. When they are using meta decks, you should be able to recognize, okay, these are the cards that are in the deck, this is their general game plan. This is what they like to do, ideally, on each turn. I know that about my opponent's deck. I also need to know that about my own deck. This is what I like to do on turns one through six. And is my game plan falling in line? Do I have the cards on turn two to execute my game plan on my later turns? Being able to think as far ahead as possible will just allow you to better position your cards in which lane, and be ready to counter what your opponent is doing. Do you have priority? Now, this is an issue that has existed throughout the entirety of Marvel Snap, where the priority indicator is very faint and subtle. There is a slight red outline around the username box of the player who has priority. The issue is not only that it's faint, but also it takes its sweet time switching from one player to the next when priority changes. So for that, what I do, I immediately look at who it says has priority, I count to five, and then I look again. And now I know, okay, my opponent really has priority because it never changed, or oh look, it did change, now I have priority. This is super important when trying to set up future turns like we previously discussed because now you know whether you can counter their cards or whether you need to play more aggressively or just how you need to play in general. Pay super close attention to the red outline around the username. Focus on snapping and retreating and forget about win rate. A lot of players, a lot of videos that you'll see will focus on win rate. This deck had a 90% win rate. This deck had a 60% win rate. Win rate is okay but this is not a standard card game where wins and losses is what determines your standings. Your standing is determined by cubes and only cubes. Yeah, hello, Mr. Burns office. Is it about my cube? Your win rate could be 30%, but if your cube rate is 1.5 a game or something ridiculous, now you're going to be climbing ranks. Now you're going to be gaining on people. Now you're going to be at top of the leaderboard because this game is all about cube management. This means you need to mentally adjust when you are playing Marvel Snap, and retreating is actually fantastic because you managed your cubes. You escaped with one cube. You lost the least amount of cubes. That should 
always be your gain if you take one thing away from this video you always want to lose the least amount of cubes for limited time modes for example Deadpool's Diner you definitely want to observe this rule that way you lose the least amount which means retreating earlier or in modes like Conquest and Rank you just want to manage how often you're losing cubes and by how much. After both wins and losses, analyze why you won or lost. Sometimes that means dealing with an emote spammer. I never mute anybody, so I'll just let them sit in an emote while I'm trying to analyze the board. It just amuses me. I'm trying to get better. They're enjoying the win. Everybody can play how they want to, <laughs> no problem. So by analyzing after you lose, you can see, okay, what exactly did my opponent do? Is there some other way I could have won? Is there some takeaway I can have this game where I can be better positioned into future matchups against this deck, similar decks, or just in general? It's very difficult to do after losses because you've just lost. Nobody wants to stew in their loss, including me. But if you want to become a better player, this is almost required so you can learn why you lost and not have repeat mistakes and blame the deck or blame RNG. That's very easy to do when a lot of the times it is actually the pilot. It is you, it is me, and it is whoever is controlling the deck. That is the reason why you actually lost. Now, the one exception to that is ego. <laughs> if you get ego, sure. Uh, there's nothing you can do there, or not much typically. The vast majority of the time, it's actually the pilot is the reason you lost. And you could have tweaked your play, you could have done something differently. And it's just good to keep in mind, sometimes the opponent flat out outplayed you. I get outplayed plenty, it happens. I played quote unquote perfectly, but the opponent did something unexpected and got four or eight cubes from me. Good game, GG's, I'll shake your hand, I'll give you a fist bump. But the majority of times, again, it, you will find if you sit and analyze these games that the reason you lost was most likely because something you could have been doing better. To a lesser extent, analyzing your wins can get you the same information. Did you get lucky? Was it a 50-50? If the opponent played here or there instead, would you actually have lost? Was this actually a bad stay and you just got lucky with the win? So next time you get in this situation, you actually don't want to stay because it was just a lucky chance that you happened to win this game. So that's also important to keep in mind. So analyzing the games after both wins and losses can definitely make you a better Marvel Snap player. Take plenty of breaks. Playing at a high level, a focused manner, can be mentally taxing, even though it's just a game. By taking breaks, you can remain fresh and your mind doesn't really burn out. You can start to tell this if you are on a somewhat of a losing streak and you tell yourself just one more game. Does that sound familiar? I know I used to experience this a ton. I still do where I get on a little bit of a losing streak and I say, okay, just one more game. Let me just end on a win. Let me just get one more game. When you start saying that you are on the decline, it is time to take a break and it is time to step away. Sure. You can get one more game in. You really need to end your session because the end is near. Your decline has already started. If you start to notice that you've made just dumb mistakes uh, consistently, everybody makes a dumb mistake. You've seen them in my videos. I will point them out in editor's notes. As long as it's not happening multiple games during my gaming session, I'm fine. It's just a one-off. But if I start to see, oh, I made a mistake here and I made a mistake last game, there might start to be a pattern forming and you're just not mentally sharp. That's when you might want to switch to just a fun deck and just mess around. But if you want to be competitive, I would advise you to just take a break and recharge and refresh. What card is winning you the game the most? And what card do you feel like you would have won more that is actually not in your deck? This is important for cube gains. If you know the card that is specifically winning you a lot of cubes, you can snap more confidently earlier in the match. So the earlier you snap, 
the better off you actually are because your opponent won't catch on to what you're trying to do. These are the three God Hand cards you want. I'm going to snap into this. They're not thinking two turns in advance. And so they will stay, especially if you haven't played cards on the board. Knowing the cards that win you games is key for this. The same thing with a shock card in Quake or Claw. Both of those are totally unexpected. They probably will continue to be for as long as Snap is around. If you have locations that are favorable to these surprise cards or a number like them, then snapping earlier is good as well because now you can play them on the last turn and the opponent will be totally caught off guard and that is how you maximize your cubes. The missing card that could have won you the game, this is important again when you are analyzing post game. If you start to notice a trend, boy, this card I noticed would have won me three of the five games I analyzed. I need to find a spot for this card in my deck, and then I can win more, which leads to more cubes. So this is when the deck comes into play, but again, you should take responsibility. You are the one that built this deck, unless you're copying from me, and then you can blame me. <laughs> But otherwise, it is on the person building the deck. So pay attention to the cards that are putting in work for you and pay attention to cards that are missing from your deck and fit them in if it means you will gain more cubes. Don't hope. If the opponent snaps you and you look at your hand and you go, I can't win the game with this hand, you should retreat 100% of the time. I'm saying this full well knowing <laughs> that I don't follow this advice all the time. But if you want to be super competitive and highly competitive, this is the tip to follow. Hope just leads to ruin. It leads to less cubes. Sometimes the hope will work out. That's how hope works. But if you start to track it, you will notice that you will have a lot of bad stays where you could have left with losing less cubes, but now you've stayed the hope didn't pan out, and now you've lost twice as many cubes most of the time. One to two is twice as many for staying due to hope. So this is the biggest key when you wanna be super competitive, do not stay on hope. This applies to every single game mode within Marvel Snap. It's worth repeating, do not stay based on hope. Allow the bots to pump you up. The vast majority of bots, this is specific to rank, are bots that will allow you to win the game 99% of the time in my anecdotal experience. What that means is when I identify that I am playing a bot, they have very basic names, they don't use series 4 or 5 level cards, at least as of this recording. You can also look at some of the Marvel Snap dedicated web pages for how to identify bots. So when I'm playing bots as I'm climbing to infinite, I always stay and I always snap early and ideally when they are winning because now they are more likely to snap back or stay after you snap. If you don't face bots at some point in your journey to infinite, I'm sorry. I think it's unfair for some players to face bots and others not to. So we will just move on. Use the same deck. This is even more important the earlier you are into your Marvel Snap journey. You just won't be as experienced and you won't have as much knowledge in strategy or opponent's decks. So by sticking to one deck, what you are doing is you are fully maximizing your ability with this deck, you're improving with this deck, you are finding weird ways to win, if you start bouncing around to different decks, you just naturally will be less experienced. You will make some mistakes, that's natural. The more you use the same deck, the less mistakes you will make, and the better you will be at pulling out wins when your back is against the wall. You will also have a better idea of when to snap and retreat, because you will be so experienced with this deck, you will just have a feeling, you will just know whether you are drawing well or not, and if you can win into the matchup that you are facing. This is the first video in my strategy series. Other planned topics are conquest and deck building. 
If I missed a tip that you feel like really helped you improve, by all means let me know and I will feature it in an upcoming video. And if you have ideas for other topics you would like to hear me speak about, let me know that as well and I will look into addressing those. Before we get out of here, a big thanks to all of the members of the channel. Thank you for supporting me in this way. And if you haven't, thank you for watching till the end of the video. Both ways really help out the channel. I'm looking to grow. I'm looking to get monetized. And hopefully by the time you're watching this, I have been. But otherwise, thank you for your support. It means the world to me. I love helping people. And the amount of love that this channel has received is just, it, it means a lot to me. So, so thank you for the bottom of my heart. Until next time.